The beauty of baseball, something I want to cover here on Comrades Corner. And as we sort of move towards the end, and we're definitely moving towards the end of Comrades Corner, we're going to talk more about life values, my values, my passions, and less about USC hard news. Because it's time to start to recap how amazing a radio show Comrades Corner has really has really been for so many different people, including myself. And it's given me an opportunity to talk about things that really matter most in my life, and that's baseball. And I'm inspired by Daily Trojan sports columnist Sean McCormick, who basically he filled his last or his, his final column for the Daily Trojan discussing his strong passion for sports. His is more, I guess, for USC football. And, you know, amongst other things, he's a, a East Coaster, so he's over here on the West Coast, and he loves USC sports. And I look, I mean, I support USC sports as well. I'd be a fool if I didn't. I like the Lakers, despite the ugly four losses to San Antonio, amongst other things. I also enjoy watching the LA Kings. I even favor the Galaxy from time to time. But on top of it all, at the end of the day, ultimately, my true love is for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And anybody who knows anything about me knows this. I mean, it's just, you meet me and you know that I'm a Dodger fan. I bleed and breathe and think and everything Dodger blue. I really do. And, and the question is why. They play 162 games a year. 160 games a year. And I'm on Facebook, my, my, my Facebook page. And I'm, I'm giving you guys uh, daily Facebook status updates. It's more for me than for you. But I have a good time of it. I mean, I'm, I'm doing that game after game from early April to early October. I mean, from one school year to the, to the next. I'm doing Facebook updates for the Dodgers. Win, lose, otherwise, I'm all over it. I watch the games, I follow them. I don't have time to watch all nine innings like I used to, but I definitely, each and every single game, I am following them. I'm listening to the best broadcaster in the nation, Vince Scully. And I mean, just baseball, the whole essence of it, the whole production, it's amazing to me. And people will say, you know, why do you care so much about a bunch of overpaid ball players and you're just playing one of 162 games of a year? I mean, this happens the next day and the next day and the next day. Just skip a couple. What's the big deal, Conrad? I mean, why are you so glued to the screen? I have no impact on the outcome. I have no control over whether they win or lose. I have no investment in the team, so there's not like money involved or anything like that. And people say it's stupid to live or die by how these players perform when none of these guys really know my name. People can think what they want to think. It's never going to change how I feel about the Dodgers or baseball or sports in general. It's just simply not the case. Baseball is not just a game for me, at least for me. It's just not just a game. I mean, it, it is a core value that I cherish on a daily basis. I admire baseball's balance between physical talent and mental mastery. I love how batters and pitchers and they have to outfox each other. It's a chess match. What pitch is coming next? And if you, get, if you guess the pitch wrong, can you adjust? Can you foul it off? How about runners on base? The, the battle between the base runner and the pitcher trying to steal second base and, and also at the same time not trying to get picked off. And just the, the mental aspect of baseball, the psychological deal of it, for 162 games, I mean, it's grueling. It's enduring. And it's, it's, a, it's awesome to be able to watch a team evolve from a team that's you know, doing something in April all the way to October. It really is. It is an evolution, and it is a journey that I enjoy taking. And the values of teamwork is strong. You feel as a unit out there. I could be the best shortstop in the nation and throw cannons to first base every single time, but the first baseman can't catch. I lose. Everybody loses. I love the values of sacrifice. Bottom of the ninth inning, down by one run with nobody out. We got runners at first and second. I'm going to bunt you guys over to second and third and let the guy behind me single you both home to win the game. I'm not going to try to lace one to the gap or hit one out of the ballpark to be the hero. The guy behind me has a better chance of doing that. So I'm going to bunch you over. I love that. I love that. No other sport, well, not necessarily true. I mean, blocking and other things like that, screens and basketball, blocking and football. I mean, there is that element of self-sacrifice. So I love that. I love that about sports. You sort of really are part of a team. And when the team wins, you win. When the team loses, you, could have, you can go four for four with four home runs, all of them solo shots, and you lose 10-4. You still lose. I love that about sports. I really do. I love the competitive element of it. I love how you're able to get to know people in a whole different light, like with intramural sports awesome social opportunity. You get to know them on the field. I mean, that's very different than what they're like at, at parties and in the classroom and other things like that. Very different. You're actually working together. You're part of a whole. You're part of a unit. I love that about baseball. I love that about sports in general. And for me also, getting more personal, it's the memories. I was there with my family, with, with my dad, my mom, and, and my brother Baron when Steve Finley hit the grand slam that sent the Dodgers to the playoffs in 2004 against the San Francisco Giants. Game two of that series. Dodgers down 3-0 in the ninth inning. They rally for three runs. Bases juice, 3-3 tie. Steve Finley only needed a sack fly. 
but he hit it out of the ballpark, right field. I'll never forget it. I remember 2006, Jeff Kent, J.D. Drew, Russell Martin, Marlon Anderson, back-to-back-to-back-to-back home runs. And, of course, no Marcus Ciapara in the uh, 10th inning, hitting a homer to win that game, a two-run shot after San Diego scored a run. Dodgers in the ninth down, 9-5, four home runs in a row, 9-9 now. San Diego scores a run in the top of the 10th, 10-9 Padres. No Marcus Ciapara homers for a two-run shot in the bottom of the 10th at Chavez Ravine, and the Dodgers win 11-10. The place went bananas. I'll never forget it. I was there with, with my dad, with Barry. It was my September 18th, 2006. It was my 16th birthday, and Grandma was there. And look, I mean, that was one of the best moments I ever had with my grandmother. She didn't know anything about baseball, and she was having a good time. It was an amazing experience for me. I mean, look, when the Dodgers hit four home runs in a row, I mean, I don't care where you're from. You're All of a sudden, you're getting pretty excited, unless you're rooting for the other team or something like that, obviously. And that was a, cher- that was a memory that I've, I've always cherished, and, and I love that memory. And I always go back to it when the Dodgers, of course, always struggle for runs nowadays. But it was just amazing. I, you believe in miracles. I mean, the Dodgers, four home runs in a row? I mean, come on. No way. And everybody wanted to leave. It was 9-5. San Diego had a huge lead. The Dodgers got beat up all day thanks to Brad Penny and company. And I remember my dad and, you know, people I say, yo, we got to get out of here. It's a school night or something like that. I said, no, no, we are staying here. We're not leaving. We're, you're going to leave me here. We're, I'm not leaving. I'm not giving up my team. And nine times out of ten, I look like a fool as everybody, you know, gets, you know, beats traffic and gets themselves out of the out of the ballpark earlier than I do. But that one day where I actually stuck around, that was worth it. And then, of course, uh, 2008, I was there. You know, Manny Wood, of course, sweeping the Cubs. I mean, unbelievable. But with the Dodgers, Manny Ramirez, of course, what he provided to that team. And uh, and, and just it was just the chemistry on the Dodgers was great. And I couldn't believe it just couldn't wait to come home from from school. I guess it was back in high school in 2008. I just couldn't believe my eyes. Dodgers on the road beating up the first place Cubs. I couldn't believe it. Oh, my goodness. They, not only have they won one game. Oh, my goodness. Two. Could it be three? Oh, my. Wow. I mean, that was beautiful. Of course, they got kicked out by the Phillies. And then 2009, sweeping the Cardinals. Mark Loretta line drive single up the middle. I remember it was more of a blooper, actually, in the ninth inning and game two of that. Dodgers with a ninth inning comeback victory. Then they beat the Cardinals up on the road. Oh, my. Oh, I I just love it. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Baseball is the ultimate reality show. For anybody who says 162 games a year, whatever that may be, you know, what's the difference? Every game is different. Every season is packed with wonderful memories to treasure for a lifetime and beyond. And that's how I see it.